What's up everyone? It's Sky Schooly here, a staff writer with business.com. In this video today, I'll be talking about the time and attendance solution when I work. So I'll be focusing primarily on the scheduling features, talking about how to add employees to the platform and how to build and modify employee shifts and schedules. Let's dive in. All right, so this is the one I work free trial. And this is the main dashboard that you'll see when you set it up. As you can see, I've already started setting up some information within it. But today I'm gonna to show you how the employee scheduler works. So up here on the top left is where you click into the scheduler. You can see that I've created some fictional employees and some fictional schedules just to get some information on the page to show you. But down here on the left is where you can add a new employee. So we will start with We'll say Heather Weston. You can add in her email address and number and her specific role. So there's a few different options, but we'll say that she's an employee. Next, you can add in the schedule that you want her to go to. So we'll just click on default, but if you had different store locations or something like that, then you could set up different schedules within this. For her position, we will say that she is a sales associate but you could also put more than one. So maybe on different days, she can work different types of shifts. So maybe she could be a sales associate, a manager and work inventory. And then you can also add any tags. So specific skills or qualifications that you might wanna note for Heather. You can add in specific hourly rates for each position as well as different notes and other advanced details. But for now, we'll just leave that all blank and go ahead and add user. Okay, so here you'll see Heather. She has populated here with an empty schedule. But to create a schedule, you just simply click the little plus button and you can add some of the suggestions here or you could create a custom shift. So if you wanna create a position for her, these are the options that we've already assigned to her or you could assign her one of these unassigned positions. And these are just sample shifts that I've created when I was going through the free trial. So you can add in any shifts that you would like. You'll see that it auto populates the time that I've already pre-designated for the shift, but you could easily change that right here if needed. You can add in any of those tags and shift task lists. Now you'll note that we don't have any shift task lists for floor workers specifically, because I haven't created one yet, but I'll show you how to do that in just a minute but this is essentially just a list of to-do items for this specific shift. And then you could add in any shift notes. You could repeat the shift if needed. For example, say we want her to work this shift every week and we want it to go on for the next two weeks. And go ahead and click save. You'll see that it has populated a floor shift for her for this day. And if you see this little repetition bar right here that my arrow is pointing to, this will just let you know that this is a repeating shift for her for upcoming weeks. Now, to add other shifts, you can simply click, couple clicks, done. Another easy feature we liked is the drag and drop option. So say you want her to work the floor this day instead of Gerald, you can just drag it right on up and there you go. And then you could add another shift there for him or you don't have to. So we'll just go through and add a few shifts for her for this week. Great, now she's got a full week. So there's a couple of things I wanna point out once your schedule is made here and before you published it. So down here, you'll notice these little triangle tags in the corner here. So this green tag will let you know that this is a preferred shift that Laura has, that's put into Laura's user profile. And you'll notice this little silver tag is this is a day that she's unavailable. So you'll see up here on Brian's, this is also a day that he's unavailable. So you don't want to schedule a shift for that day. However, we've accidentally scheduled a shift for her. So if you go ahead and click into it, it'll give you a note. Oh, hey, this is why we've got that red little tag is this is unavailable. So you could just delete the shift. And you'll notice that the red tag goes away. We've got another red tag down here. And you'll see that it's probably pretty obvious. It's because this user has set a time off this day, but you can click into it 
Again, it'll give you that note. Okay, it's because they have scheduled time off and you could delete the shift if needed. You do also have the option to go in and view or cancel their time off request straight from this screen, which is, which is great. So you may be wondering, how do we create these little tags? If you want to, you can simply go into Laura's drop down here and just click edit availability. And you'll notice that this is the availability put in preferred. This is the unavailable day. If you wanted to add in another one, you could just click in here. There's all these different options, put day, time, all kinds of good stuff right there. So I know before I had mentioned task lists and I'll show you how to do that right now. So down here on the left, you go over to task list and you'll see these are the ones that I've already created. If we wanna create a new one, you just click task list. You can create one for the team or a shift. We'll do that floor shift that we were talking about before. So you give it a name and you just add in a few different options. So maybe you want them to greet customers, um, verify inventory and lock the doors when they leave. Great, you can add it when you're editing a shift or you can add it to the templates, but we'll just go ahead and finish that up. And now if we go back to one of those floor shifts, here we'll go to the one with Heather that we were speaking about before. And now you can go in and add that task list for her. So she'll have that. And do you wanna apply it to this one shift or all, since we did have this as a repeating shift, we'll apply it to all. So that is kind of it in a nutshell. Um, one last thing I did want to point out before signing off is if you are interested in tracking overtime, which is a really big deal for employers when creating schedules. Over here on the left, you'll notice these time, these numbers, this is how many hours these employees are gonna work each week. So down here, you've got your total hours. So you'll notice you have 37 hours of overtime. So if you don't want any employees to work overtime, then you can go through and modify your shifts based on um, their overtime and modify it that way. Again, this is drag and drop, so it's super easy. You'll see, there you go. Now she's down to 40, perfect. Once you've got the schedule the way that you like it, let's pretend that all of these overtimes are gone and ready to go. Then you'll just click over here on publish. You can select the recipients. So who do you want it to go out to? We want it to go to everyone. This is the scheduled time range that we're looking at and go ahead and publish 45 shifts.